breathe and make some space here. This guy, I got to turn this down. So I'm helping somebody out right now. Uh, it's pretty amazing the things that happen. Um, they're pretty amazing things that are happening. If you hear some speaking in the background, it's because I'm monitoring a client uh, overseas in the UK. And so I just have to make sure I keep in touch with him. And I have one of my my agents uh, listening in and watching him right now so that he's okay. Uh, this is Open Clinic, Synaptic Syntax Sequencing. And there are other things. So that's why I put a bunch of letters here. WRC, EAP, LEC, and CMT by Uniquilibrium LLC. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, I, yeah, there's a reason for all of it. Um, who can uh, hear? There's probably, you can hear chatter in the background. It sounds like um, like a radio or something. Again, I'm monitoring somebody that I'm helping out right now, and they're overseas. It's like, uh, I guess, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning in the UK right now, probably approaching 3 o'clock, I think. Or four, let's see, it's 9, so there's 6 hours, 5, 5 or 6 hours ahead. Um, anyway. Um, so open clinic, what does that mean? Uh, I'm a, I, I've been trained as a therapist in the art and science of clinical hypnosis, also known as hypnotherapy. Uh, I can carry the designation of hypnotist, master hypnotist or hypnotherapist, uh, according to the, the dictionary of occupational titles. Um, the United States Department, uh, United States Dictionary of Occupational Titles, that is. I also have a bachelor's degree in metaphysical sciences from the University of Metaphysical Sciences and uh, a degree in English language and linguistics. And so as a therapist, I hold spaces for people and uh, help them to uh, resolve certain issues that are plaguing their subconscious mind. Hello, Chris, I see you left uh, the space over there. Um, let's bring Chris up here for a second. And I'm still monitoring him over there. Uh, hey, Chris, what's going on, brother? Hello, sir. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I was uh, responding to a private uh, message, or I guess what the hip kids call a DM um, uh, with somebody on Facebook about the Meta Elevate Scholarship Program. Uh, she's been, uh, she was asking me on a form there on, or a thread, sorry, <clears throat> it's not a form, I guess a post. And within that post, they have a thread going and she asked me on that thread um, if, um, I had some additional information about, you know, Meta, and if she could DM me, I told her yes. I was just finally getting back to her um, and just kind of giving her um, some some information on, uh, like, the regular 100 to 900 series or whatever, yeah. where to find it. And so, yep, um, and now I'm here. Um, and then I was just with, what's his name? So, right. um Oh yeah, I'm I'm still monitoring him over there with with my drone just to make sure he's okay. I'm trying to talk to him. Something happened. Um, yeah, I heard you laughing um, as I was listening in. He was uh, being pretty amusing. Um, so just in the vein, uh, everybody, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, the first thing that you see here is Open Clinic, and that's because I uh, found what I feel to be a rather ingenious way of opening up an online clinic as a clinical hypnotist, a master hypnotist, uh, to hold therapy sessions also as a metaphysical scientist uh, from the Wisdom of the Heart Church's uh, University of Metaphysical Science, Sciences and just years of practicing and helping guiding people through things. My scope of practice is vocational and avocational motivation and self-improvement. And so I found a way um, 
to hold space there uh, for people in a private space to be able to talk through their uh, their issues and also how to address some of the issues that they're dealing with. Remember, vocational and avocational motivation and self-improvement using hypnosis, so addressing the subconscious mind, which is the seat of all of our behaviors or the driver of all of our behaviors. So um, you can easily find out how that works. Um, so for example, if anybody, if you have anything that you want to talk about uh, in a therapeutic sense, and you want suggestions, uh, consultation about different therapeutic uh, modalities that come from the, the science and art of hypnosis to help affect your subconscious mind and behavior. Hold on. Just Uh, so uh, we're holding a, a therapeutic space um, so that uh, people can come and they can talk about any of their issues in a private space. Uh, and it's a, it's virtual, and it's uh, so that means it's online and it's global. And so this is to really provide the services that I've been wanting to provide uh, for the longest time. And um, I'm able to put it in a way where you can access it 100% from wherever you are on your mobile device and you're able to speak about your ideas and also get advice addressing the issues that you're dealing with. And I like to call issues, you know, a lot of people a lot of times say issues. I call them pets, personal exploration topics. We all have these personal exploration topics that can be addressed using the art and science of clinical hypnosis and metaphysical sciences, which I, I think that is your way. best one yet, man. I, I really, really like that. Yeah, it's a really good little um, a space that I've created online for people to be able to come in, just like you would check into uh, any physical brick and mortar clinic. You can come in and you can say hello. And hi, Sarah. Uh, Sarah's here. Um, and you can come to the clinic, you can check in, you can make appointments just like you would a brick and mortar clinic. And you come in and you talk about whatever issues. Well, right now the issue I have is that I want to go buy and eat an entire key lime pie. And I, uh, I'm going to let you do your uh, clinical uh, hypnosis on me to make sure that I do not get in the car and drive to Wegmans and spend my, which is probably like seventeen dollars on oh a uh, key lime pie. Hey, I just saw Vlad. Vlad was in the queue just now. Vlad, I saw you, buddy. Um, uh, I hope you're well. Um, Vlad and Sarah and you guys, I'm glad you're here. Um, this is another thing, uh, folks. Whoever might be listening to this recording. And to um, the the playback, uh, Chris, Sarah, and I, uh, Vlad, we were in a room earlier, and it had a similar name because I was speaking about those bunch of letters you see down there, W R C E A P L E C C M T and all that, right? And there's a reason why I did that. Um, but while we were there, a gentleman who uh, is um, incarcerated in a psychiatric uh, institution in the UK called, I mean, I could very well share all this information, but I'm not because he's on a social audio app reaching out to people. And so um, my team, we all sit, sat and we took his call and we listened to him and we just held a space so we could listen. As a matter of fact, I'm still monitoring him right now uh, from another device. And I'm, I'm laughing because he's in rather good spirits for someone who's in the position that he's in. He's just kind of like, you know, he's kind of like a grumpy guy right now, you know, as anyone would, would be. And he's quite entertaining because he's British and you know how the British are. And just, uh, they're very, he's, he's Irish, very he's Irish and he's grumpy or he's Irish because he's been there for three weeks because he won't play their game yeah. because he, you know, like any reasonable human being is just like, bro, I know that I'm being sane. You're trying to convince me I'm not being sane right now. 
and it's quite annoying. But he doesn't understand if he just played along for like five days, they, they, he would have been sent home probably. Yeah, and so um, it, it just came really kind of serendipitously and very oddly because I was opening the room over on call-in to – who is just calling in just now? Why, why do you keep jumping out of the queue, Vlad? What's the matter? <laughs> um, and so uh, so I was holding the space just to announce these uh, different initiatives uh, that I've been implementing, and they're building on top of other things that I've been doing. And one of the main things is this open clinic and – um, well, right now is the open clinic. Uh, the other one that I'll talk to you about in just a moment, CMT, uh, is, uh, stands for Clinical Metaphysical Therapy. Um, and I just named it that because I can. Um, it doesn't take away from anything I'm doing. It's just, it's just a name. Um, also, the letters CMT, uh, you know, uh, have um, a long history. So I like to plug into other things like that. Anyway, so... Uh, let me get into – so we were just meeting, and I was just kind of kind of uh, hashing out some details for – Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I love you, CMT. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not as much of an intellect as you are, and I'm pretty sure you're not talking about the uh, country music television channel. So um, <laughs> what are you speaking on? That's hilarious. Um, yes, CMT. The CMT is well founded, the country music channel. Um, those letters, CMT, are. Uh, uh, did he stop talking? Did he leave the room? Hold on, I'm checking on something else. Um, yeah, anyway, so uh, holding the, the open clinic right now is anybody is welcome to come and experience what it's like. Um, again, it's me uh, working one on one with people. There is a space uh, that you can open up with me and have one-on-one -on -one interaction in a private thought space that also served, serves as more than talk therapy because the kind of talk that I do is a very specific language, which is metaphorical and designed to put aside the subconscious mind, the critical filter of the subconscious mind, that is to have access to the subconscious mind in order to help you to plant the kind of suggestions that you want in the soil of your subconscious mind and uproot those that you do not want to be planting or taking root in your subconscious mind and maybe even grounding them up and turning them, transmuting them into more soil or even more compost to help grow those things which you want into your subconscious mind. Because remember- The regenerative farming the of the mind. That's right, the regenerative farming of the mind. Because remember, soil, just like the subconscious mind, does not care what you plant in it. It will grow whatever you plant. Case in point, just like in Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret, he says if you find a soil and you've got good land and it's equal everywhere, if you plant a seed of corn and a seed of nightshade, which is a deadly poison, up and you cover them up and you water them and let them get sunlight, equally the same, up will come two plants, one corn and one poison. See, the soil doesn't care, just like your subconscious mind does not care what you plant in it. You can either plant nutrition or you can plant poison. Either one exactly. is going to come. And like with the same, the same metaphor, we must treat the soil as a living soil because that's the same thing with regenerative farming. Right now, the, the soil is not treated as a living soil being there's no living organisms right we spray it with pesticides so it's just lack of knowledge farmers don't know it right so we're not spreading the knowledge so as you say like you must treat that you must treat that soil you treat your brain as the ability that it is still living it, it, it can still grow don't don't cap your brain off by telling yourself that you can't learn new things or you can't repair your mind or you're you know, you're, you're not able to overcome these things don't entrap yourself with this, with this, this verbal uh, entrapment of the mind, which this has a physiological, you know, effect on your body because you're trapping, you know, your mind and and the and the psychology and the neurological 
connections in your body by using this vocabulary. So you must treat it as your mind is alive and it's, it's the soil is alive. So the things that you're planting and the, the way you're watering it, you know, um, but just you, you have to believe in yourself. Don't don't believe in these things that we've been taught uh, uh, by society in general, because that's what really prevents people from from getting over it. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just it, all, all in general. Please don't take this as like I'm trying to say, uh, <clears throat> you know, that things are easy to get over, or not easier this or that. Um, but you must treat it like as a living, breathing, repairable organism. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree agree more. You can even take that analogy to a lot of things in life is treating it as a living organism because really we are all part of one big living organism. Um, and so, again, you know, one emphasis I, I'm making here is the open clinic. Um, something that I would like to introduce that I've developed years ago is called synaptic syntax sequencing. Um, I named that to – it basically means the same thing or has a similar definition to neuro-linguistic programming, but because neuro-linguistic programming has such a confused history, just like hypnosis does itself, I decided to create my own uh, triple-lettered, uh, well, single-lettered, three times a uh, little uh, scientific, academic-sounding term for what I do in behavioral change or incremental thought change, hypnosis. So I call it synaptic syntax sequencing. You know, synapses are the spaces between the nerves. Syntax means it has to do with order, right? Um, and sequencing, again, the, the timing. So there are so many things that we can look at for synaptic syntax sequencing, but basically it's the same thing as all of the other uh, forms of of uh, hypnotherapy or subconscious mind therapy. It's a form, a way of using your voice to induce change. Using your voice to induce change. That's all it is. And it's incremental change, right? So it's incremental change. And that's what we're doing here, right? We're, we're changing. We're creating change of all kinds, but it, it's not all the time uh, rapid, right? It sometimes can be incremental, and that's what we are looking for here. The next things you see on this list are WRC, which is World Reading Club. World Reading Club is an initiative of mine that Chris has joined forces with me, as well as, uh, as, well as Sarah Del Valle, uh, Chris Cavallo here is on board and I have some great team members and the World Reading Club is really just that. It's a reading club, not just a book club because it contains, we will be, our activity is reading of all kinds. And so uh, right now we st I'm kicking it off with reading a book together and having a, our first book focus on October 24th, 2022 on the book called Joy in Plain Sight by Katya Davidova. And so we'll be uh, analyzing that book, talking about it, maybe reading some of our favorite parts about the book. And so the World Reading Club's uh, first book focus drive was launched on August 23rd, 2022, which was simply one of the first days, the official first launch of days of bringing awareness to World Reading Club and awareness to the first book so that people could buy or borrow Joy in Plain Sight by Katya Davidova in order to join us at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 24th, 2022 to discuss the book that you've read. See, I've given 60 days because I know that book is not going to take 60 days to read. I read it in one day. So, um, but you have 60 days to read it, maybe reread it, take some notes. Uh, Katya Davidova, the author herself, asked me the question, uh, how is joy showing up in your everyday? So I extend that question to you. How is joy showing up in your everyday? How does joy show up in your everyday? And as you're reading the book, Joy in Plain Sight, you can ask yourself that question. How is joy showing up in your everyday? And then we can ask that question to you on October 24th at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern Standard Time, where we talk about 
Joy in Plain Sight by Katya Davidova for World Book Club's first uh, book focus. World, I'm sorry, and I said World Book Club, but World Reading Club's actually first book focus. So I think there's already a World Book Club. My, I am hosting and running the World Reading Club because we are reading uh, uh, and, and all kinds of things. could be magazines, scientific journal articles, and what have you, whatever you get joy out of So, in reading. Hopefully it's all good stuff. All right, and uh, the World Reading Club. So EAP, Edgar Allan Poe. And the LEC is Literary Expert Certification. Ooh, certificates. Yeah, so this is the World Reading Club's Edgar Allan Poe Literary Expert Certificate. And so the Literary Expert Certificate, first of all, there are some uh, minimal requirements for the level one certificate. And it's actually quite simple. And it's getting out of your comfort zone to one, do a little bit of speaking in front of an audience, just like here on Wisdom, for example. And there are several different certifications you can get. As a matter of fact, there are three that are open right now. There are three that are open right now. One is the Edgar Allan Poe, uh, one is Maya Angelou, and one is Langston Hughes. And these are all three literary expert certificates, level one literary expert certificates that you can earn and this is through my company, which is Uniquilibrium LLC. I've opened up several certification programs. And for example, the very simple requirements, as I began to say, for the level one certification as an expert, uh, literary expert in one of these subjects is to choose three works by, for example, Edgar Allan Poe and read them publicly or in a space like this on social audio or on a podcast that you own yourself or any space. You can do it here and read it as a recording and then send the link to the three readings that you've done. You can hold a space that is proctored by me in a private or a pub public space. Um, we can do that here on Wisdom or on Colin app in the private spaces. Um, or uh, you can do it on any of your own platforms by yourself and send me the recordings later. So those are ways you can do it. We can do it live together. Uh, you know, schedule permitting, my schedule permitting. And we can also uh, view your recordings or listen to your recordings to earn your certifications. And the requirements are three works, any three works to earn the level one uh, Edgar Allan Poe Literary Expert Certification or the Maya Angelou uh, Literary Expert Certification or the Langston Hughes Literary Expert Certification. I'm sure that uh, Emily Dickinson, <laughs> a literary expert certification will be added to that and several other authors that I am quite familiar with. So Chris, I got Sarah calling up in the queue here. Do you have anything else you wanna run by me before I bring her up? Well, well yeah, absolutely. So um, let's say, you know, it's, it's, it's Poe. Let's say I choose to read Poe. Um, I do my three works. It's a, it's a mix of, of the three. You know, I, I read one live by myself. Um, maybe I, I do a guided reading with you. And then let's say I'm working with Sarah and we're doing a joint reading uh, on, on maybe more one of his. Uh, and, you know, more. Uh, uh, um, maybe a more involved piece or a longer. Like more in depth. Thank you. Yes, I was I was trying to find the right wording for it, and that wasn't just yeah. saying in depth. But yeah, more than more, yeah, more yeah. of his more character involved stories that isn't that's less narrated. <laughs> um, you know, maybe, maybe lead, needs a little bit more analysis. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so right. You know, where you need somebody else to read another character's lines. You know, it's nice to have another voice. Or, you know, if there's if there's seven characters to read, I can voice four. She can voice the other. How you know whatever. Um, it's, you know, just right. doing these, do these works. Um, so I do that. I get my level one. Uh, there's all these other great works by Poe. Um, let's say I, I read, I read yeah. more. I want to read more. Where, where is it? I mean, I guess it never really stops until you, until he just, you've read everything that he has. But um, you know, do I get extra credits for this? Do I get extra well, certifications? Okay, that, like, well, that doesn't even, yeah, that doesn't even end because you can do especially with literary and poetry works in the uh, level of 
subjective uh, opinions that are going into the analysis of any kind of uh, literary works. Um, you can have endless amounts of papers and analysis that you can write on it. And so it can never really stop. You can make an entire career or entire websites based on Edgar Allan Poe. As a matter of fact, uh, that's another great thing. You have free resources to study and to mine in order to uh, earn an Edgar Allan Poe Literary Expert Certificate from Unequilibrium LLC's World Reading Club. Uh, the, uh, there are two sites. One is called poestories.com. That's P-O-E-S-T-O-R-I-E-S, -E poestories.com. And the other one is eapo.org, eapo.org. Um, and these are actually sites that uh, Sarah Del Valle has been using as a, to accompany her hard copy book that she has of some of the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, so that is the World, Le World Reading Club Edgar Allan Poe Literacy Expert Certificate. And the level one requires that you read any three works from Edgar Allan Poe. It could be um, two poems and one story or two stories and one poem. Um, I'd rather, there has to be at least one difference. So you can be two of anything and one of another. So it could be two poems and one story or uh, two stories and one poem from Edgar Allan Poe that you read as you're live. And that's the level one. Uh, you, can, you can work with the other authors. You can do Langston Hughes and Maya Angelou, three works from each of them that you do as you're reading. And uh, that will make it so that you are eligible for the Master uh, Literary Expert Certificate, which involves you completing three works by three different of these authors, and then writing essays or lists, basically, uh, going through the words that you had difficulty with, like so it's a vocabulary, uh, a vocabulary exercise where you go through and you uh, discuss the words that you had trouble understanding in reading these works and how it changed your understanding of the work after you define them. So that's sort of your final test that you put together on your own. And if there are not, if you claim that there are not any words that um, you had difficulty with in the work, I already have three, uh, I, I, it's easy for me to choose three uh, vocabulary or three terms, three uh, vocabulary words or three terms from each of the works that I can then present to you with the guidelines on how to write the essay. So. Um, and again, that covers the World Reading Club's Edgar Allan Poe Literary Expert Certificates, as well as you can do for Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, and, and possibly even Emily Dickinson is coming up here yet, but I, I'm doing everything in threes. So it's those two, it's those three first. Um, the next thing here is CMT, uh, which stands for Clinical Metaphysical Therapy. Chris, um, I'm going to bring uh, Sarah up here. You good? What's up, buddy? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, um, <clears throat> still didn't answer my question. So I was kind of uh, uh, waiting here. Um, so what I was saying is so like, right, so, so you, you get the three works to get your additional, your first certificate for, for Poe or uh, Michelangelo. Um, and then if I, there's all these additional works by them, if I continue to read them and continue to put in these hours, uh, and do I get an additional, like, like, is there like a level two of, of Poe right. and then so like a I level did, three and then. So, yeah, so I did, uh, cover the basic, uh, vertical, um, master literary expert certificate. Um, but the other ones are not really necessary to go into now. It's just a little bit much and it doesn't really matter at this point because it's the beginning stages of that. So I don't want to go too much into that just yet. Um, but you can do th three by threes. Like, I mean, there's a whole matrix, a three by three matrix. So you can do three, uh, stories about, uh, readings of Maya Angelou's works. So three, three of Maya Angelou's works for level one in Maya Angelou, uh, level, a uh, level two Maya Angelou by reading an additional three works and a level three Maya Angelou, 
um, by reading a, an additional three works. So for a total of nine, so you can do nine Maya Angelou, Maya, nine Edgar Allan Poe, nine Langston Hughes. Um, and all of those will get uh, master certificates for every di different set of three authors that you do. Um, beyond that, uh, there are uh, expert level certificates after that, but this is all not. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, yeah, no, you know. Without the details yet. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I was just, just, I was just curious. Okay. All right. You know, because, you know, some of these guys got a lot of works. Um, so uh, fantastic. All right. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, that was, that was just curious. Yeah, and, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what yet uh, was going to exact, how exactly it's going to complete, but I do have a few guidelines that I'm following. Um, and those mainly have to do with uh, the requirements and how many works need to be examined and read and tested on. Okay. And the tests are simple. Um, but uh, they they really just can yeah I, I I really love the way you're approaching it because it's it's like a free open curriculum like you said you're like hey like what did you struggle with and then just write on the things that you struggled with like that's not even really a test it's not like it's not like a knowledge test which I love it you know because like it's then it's just so more I don't know man it's just open for it just yeah exactly it's just open format it's like it's just yeah it's reinforcement of like why not learn. You know, like it's a it's a positive learning reinforcement it's, to why I feel. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a way that I enjoy learning. But when I also completed a few of the uh, certificates from a Facebook Blueprint, Facebook Meta Blueprint, and all that, um, they were held the same way. It's like if you got an answer wrong, it really kind of, it really steers you in the right direction for how to actually know know and understand the knowledge rather than just right out giving you the answer if you got it wrong would say well we're looking for this and this and this what about this and so it gives you suggestions to help you critically think about it and only after you've gotten it wrong three times then the third time it's like okay un uncover the answer you know um but this way helps you to build up your own curriculum i've actually heard about a school like this back in 1999 i don't remember uh, what it was called, but it intrigued me, and it was one of the reasons why I decided to get my to to, get, to earn a degree from the University of Metaphysical Sciences, even after I got a professional degree from the Hypnosis Motivation Institute and other places. I have you know certificates and all that stuff, but um, because I like the open format where you're allowed to learn at your your own pace and and really just work on the things that you don't know. It shows you how to fill in your own weaknesses. So it's a self-assessment. It's very, um, very self-directed because everyone, each individual knows exactly what kind of things they need to fill in if they really want to be an expert in their field. If they really want to understand something completely, you're not, you're not going to cheat yourself. And if you do, it's just going to show. One of the things that I created with these certification programs and one of the reasons why uh, the format is this way where they have to be recorded is because um, long ago uh, I had been really frustrated with a lot of the things that I had learned about, um, you know, certification programs, uh, especially for um, in the, the fitness and um, and uh, fitness and wellness industries. And so one of the things that I actually um, came up with was a system that basically showed that no one uh, can doubt that you are the, a good teacher or a facilitator of something Right, if they can see you doing it. So let me actually read. Where's the quote that I, I uh, put? Yes, from Haiku Science Academy, HK. Sorry, yeah, when I was in Hong Kong, Special Autonomous Region. Yeah, People's Republic of China. My my company, Haiku Science Academy, was registered there. Um, one of the articles I wrote was called uh, said, "Someone cannot reasonably doubt that you are a great teacher of something when you can provide them with evidence that shows you in action successfully doing the thing." they are considering 
to hire you to do you know, have a full article all of that um and it's the same thing here if you can demonstrate your prof your proficiency in reading or your love of reading love of learning then you uh can only you know you, you have proof when you make a recording of it so um that's that's the one of the reasons why this is so um uh, so important and so uh what's the word i'm looking for so serendipitous that these apps have built-in recording and that my work is through voice uh and communication in this way and this is a great way to teach uh, literacy as well as many other things that have to do with understanding the written and spoken word so um it, it really is it, it's a it, it truly is it is it, an incredible vessel and I'm really happy to see that this is something that you've been working on for many years and you, you've thought about and, you know, we've recently met and things are really truly coming together and this initiative, this is just another initiative and it's, it's inspiring me a lot. And, you know, I've been doing some work lately and haven't really been plugged in and just, you know, being here tonight uh, is just more proof in the pudding and, uh, you know, proof in the social for social proof formula, <clears throat> you know, and it's not just uh in the digital realm it is in real life as well and um you know this has got me inspired to want to get back in the reading halo again and a few other books i i read the original uh resident evil series of books um and i enjoyed those um the dark tower series of books i really enjoyed those i'd love to get like people together you know maybe uh, some female out there wants to voice jill from resident evil or you know, some guy wants to do Barry from Resident Evil and have him read the lines for Barry and is doing these great voice uh, 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 audio books, you know, the great readings that just, it's got me uh, all kind of uh, hyped up for, for what the World Reading Club can be um, with these apps and how, it can, how we can reach out and reach people. And, um, and it gives to kind of sum this up and I'm gonna get going. I gotta help my sister move tomorrow. Um, you're you're right with the the love for reading and knowledge and 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 um the power and ability that comes from knowledge to be able to change your reality and others realities and just to better your life through 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 gaining those skills and that knowledge um is real um when i grew when i was growing up i stuttered a lot i i had a reading um disability you know or, or I just I guess a reading issue. I mean, I guess not even, not even a disability. You know, I just wasn't so up to speed. Um, and nowadays, I don't even think about it. Like, literally, just. I mean, I guess sitting here and listening to you talking about it, I was like, wow. I was like, no, I man, you're right. Like, I just it clicked. I was like, man, when I was like seven and six and you know four and five years old, like I stuttered a lot and I uh, wasn't very clear with my speech and all the other things and. Maybe it's the fact that I moved around because my family was military, and but I'd also took it upon myself to read a lot, and I played a lot of Japanese RPGs, and there was no voiceover, and there was a lot of complex language, um, so maybe that helped as well too. Um, but it's so incredibly powerful the ability to read and then create a good thought space for people and a zone where they can be confident and confident in learning and 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 gaining. The ability to just have more knowledge and skills um, is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So I just want to, I don't know, thanks for being my friend, Akeem. I'm glad I met you, man. I'm glad that, like, I mean, six months ago, or so when I met you, I was, my lease was about to end. I was about to take off and travel the world and go to different JoJo's and do all these different things and, you know, get back on my warrior monk mode and, um, I ended up staying here and, you know, I'm down my not for profits. You know, we're about to be uh, you know, up and rolling. And a lot of that's thanks to you as well. And, you know, we're just out here, I don't know, man, doing our thing and just having direct mutual aid. And um, it's just, I don't know, dude, it's, just, it's been wonderful. I, I haven't, you know, really been here plugged in for about a few weeks now. And uh, we've you know, spoken on the phone a few times, but um. Man, it's just, I don't know, all this stuff is just so powerful, dude. So just thank you for having me here tonight. Um, I, I miss your brother, and I, I'll, 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 you yeah, know, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll see you. I'll probably see you tomorrow. Hey. Um, 
Yeah, man, listen, I'm, I'm glad that uh, we met too. It was just really fortunate that, you know, you, we crossed paths at the gym and, uh, you know, yeah, there's just so much in common and we're just more than friends, you know, we're brothers and uh, you pushed me to do so many great things. And yeah, I hope I do see you tomorrow. I'm going to be around the good, uh, good chill Sunday. Um, so yeah, if you're around this way, you know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be uh, creating and sharing as usual. <laughs> yeah, man, you're, you're, uh, um, this is definitely a, a, a conversion point in the timeline of life. Um, and things, things are working out and, and we're definitely going to uh, bring, bring some, bring some good things to the world. So just, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm proud of them. I, 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 for once, uh, I say, I should say once again, I have something that I can say I, I am proud to be a part of. Um, and that's definitely um, spreading literacy because yeah, I'll put it out there again. Our goal in the next 12 months is to get 500,000 books. And um, we won't stop until I won't stop until we hit it. He keeps doing his own thing. I do a lot of stuff in the background. We are a team. Yeah. We have our own boats. They are rising the tide. We are catching these yeah, winds. Man. Everybody who's involved uh, are catching these winds with us, too. Um, you know, we want you just to just to keep putting some wind in our sails. You don't got to row our boats. We're not here asking for that. Um, we, we would put the winds in the sails by 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 reading, by joining, by taking books. When we get books donated, get them, man. Let us know what you want. You know, that's the only way we can get more books. That's the only way we can keep the wind in these sails so that we can get everybody uh, the books and, and, and paper books, you know, like actual physical books, not just you know, a Kindle credit, which is great too. We're not, we're not against that, you know, but we uh, just, man, keeping physical, actual bound books, just the smell of pages, just the, uh, the, the ink on the page, man, it's just something about it. And yeah. then getting that in a kid's hand that like, about those yeah, man. And like, could you imagine like sending that to somewhere where they just don't have books, you know? And, and I'm not going to be religious, but it's not like yeah. we're sending them a Bible, you know, we're sending them actual literature. We're sending them actual, like, Education. Gosh, Chris. <laughs> I'm just saying, come on, man. We gotta send education. You know, real education, man. Things that matter, sure. like like it's you funny, know, you know it's a funny thing to say as a if you don't have food, if you don't have food, you don't who cares about philosophy? If you can't pay your bills, who cares about philosophy? If you can't make the seed grow and your kids are starving and you have to sell your kids to the Taliban to feed your other children, you don't care about philosophy. You know, you need education to empower yourself to make money or to be able to enrich your life through education and know how to farm better and know how to make things and do things. And uh, just literacy, man, it's, it's so important. Um, but, yeah, before I start going all crazy, because I, 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 I love I, 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 I love people and. Um, yeah, man. So anywho. Let me get off of here. I, I had to take care of my sister tomorrow, dude. And I just, I love uh, you. Krista. And this is such an important thing. Is that, are you meeting up with Krista tomorrow? Oh, no, my actual sister. Yeah, my, 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 my blood okay. sister. Yeah, she just, she just bought a house. So yeah. uh, congratulations. She's real super young. So I'm happy for her. And she was like, can you come drive this big old U-Haul? Can yeah. you do this? Can you do that? And I was like, yeah, man, of course. Like, we didn't need me to come like pick but up this truck. Yeah. And we didn't need me to do that. And. He said her man's going to be there, so at least he's he, he's he's not very smart, but he's strong, so I'll give him that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some qualities. He ain't brainy. He's brawny. Yeah, yeah, and he takes good care of my sister, man. She She's not very nice to him at times, and he, cool. he, he takes it, so I'll, I'll give him that, right. too. You know, he, he's a good guy. He just, he just – Oh man, I'm, I don't know if he did drugs when we were in high school, and I just never knew. Or um, he just <laughs> <laughs> let me stop, man. Let me stop. You're funny. Dude, yeah, I love you, man. Um, so yeah, hit me up tomorrow. We'll see. You know, I'll be around if, if you're around this town, this part of town. Um, we'll do something. If not, we'll just reconnect again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me here, and uh, and just yeah, take care, man. I'll I'll, I'll talk to you later. All right, see you soon. Later.
Oh, oh, that was Chris Cavallo of Cavallo Creations. My good friend and partner, business partner and friend out here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And up to the stage right now is Graciela Moore. What's up? You're in Virginia? How you doing? Yeah, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm good. How are you? What do you think? I was in China still? Wait. No, for some reason, I thought you were in L.A. or in California, but my husband is from Virginia. I've been there. Hashtag nice. Virginia is for lovers. Um, <laughs> Roanoke. <laughs> yeah, what? All over the license plate. The, the hashtag Virginia is for lovers. I know. License plate. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, but I'm just passing through. I mean, I, so Roanoke, I, I don't Roanoke. I'm not from here. Yeah, Roanoke. Okay. Uh, um, of course, yeah, so yeah. all these letters and stuff, you asked me in a message, what is it? I'll explain later, but uh, what, what are you saying right now? I'm, no, I'm not the letters. Thing. I want to know I want to know what your open clinic is about, synaptic syn syntax sequency. What's yeah, up okay. with that? So two, th <laughs> so two things. One, I want to <laughs> – I'm laughing because I'm thinking about something from last night when I was talking to you. And um, <laughs> one is um, – how I was like, hey, Graciela, so tell me about um, what really made you change your mind about going ahead and getting the, <laughs> the lights. And you're like, I just told you. <laughs> and what's funny about that is that is that I've heard you say that before <laughs> to people because, like, you know, you have this voice and you, like, expect people to be t paying attention and listening to you. And so I've just heard you say That's that right. to other people. And you're just like, I just, it's like, what are you talking about? I just said that. <laughs> But yes. you, you say it I very mean, gently, I, but, it, I, but it changes the air a little bit. You're just like, because you let people know. I'm a teacher. Like, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, I didn't I know say that, that correctly. Social... <laughs> right. I know that it's social audio and we're all multitasking, but, you know, active listening is a skill. Yeah. And it, it takes practice. It so it's okay. <laughs> You're so it's right okay. about that. I just... Um, I'm just so grateful that I, I practice it every day. So there you go. Yeah. I need to do it more too. Cause I was talking to my friend, Chris, that was just on here and, um, and Sarah, and I was telling him, I was like, look, I'm sorry. I'm asking you like this question 20 times. <laughs> I was like, I just need to focus. I was like, I just need to focus. Just, just like, I, I swear. Anyway, um, open clinic. Uh, first of all, um, I'm a, I'm an ethical hacker, so I like to hack. And like I, I like to say, uh, patch and stitch different software together or just kind of use them for different purposes that they may not have been meant to be used. So um, a couple of days ago, I was on another app called Call-In, and there was somebody who I had seen in and out of some of the rooms, and she was not doing well. And she was, you know, speaking about, you know, taking her life and all this stuff, stuff like that. And she just happened to pop in a room where I was with four other people and started talking about this. And um, so I was like, all right. I said, look, there's this app called Wisdom. And I explained it to her and I said, it's basically like if you go in there and you can swipe and select and if you hear something that you like, it's like just going to a place where you're just showered with great messages all the time. And, you know, I talked to her. Uh, Sarah was in there too, who's from, who I met here on Wisdom. And so was uh, Mr. Two Extra. He was there too. And we, and you know, he followed me over there from here because of something I said in one of my talks. And so there's three of us and plus this guy, Vlad, who also then he came over to Wisdom now, too. Um, and, and I told her about that. And so uh, that we all came over to Wisdom and we did like this little that thing I told you the other day where we just came on everybody's uh, platform and we just told some stories and asked questions and did a show. So each of us had like a really full show you know, one right, one back to back. So we did like four of them in a row. I started it off and had, you know, uh, had Sarah and Vlad and Crystal. And I don't know if there was one other person, but anyway, so, oh yeah. And, and extra, Mr. How can I forget extra, Mr. Two extra. And so everybody had like, had four people come back to back calling in and just showering each other with love and just talking to each other. And, um, and then the next day I spoke to somebody else and they were having a difficult time, but it was here on Wisdom, and they were talking to somebody else, and they, they said something. And I, I'm not going to get into any details because now I'm in a hypnotherapist-slash-client relationship, but 
I wanted to figure out a way how I could do that because we're so separated far distances. And in an instant, something that I had been thinking about for a long time just popped into my head. So I just set it up and decided to go for it. So I started a room on this app called Colin, a private room. Well, you can start different shows. And I started a show and the show was called Clinical Metaphysical or, or yeah, Clinical Metaphysics Therapy. And it's just I just made up the name because it sounds kind of cool to me. And I also do clinical hypnosis and I have a degree in metaphysical science. So I just thought I'll call it clinical metaphysics therapy. And I said it's a private by appointment only and private spaces. So people can just go in one on one. And I start off with the premise of using some relax relaxation techniques based on clinical hypnosis. And then we have a conversation and they can tell me where I'm mostly listening and they tell me what the things that are bothering them, which I like to call pets. People have all kinds of – people say, I have these issues or problems. Instead, I like to call them pets, P-E-T, which stands for personal exploration topics. And so mm -hmm. we go over the person's personal exploration topics, and then I address it with some different steps from behavioral science based mostly on clinical hyp hypnotherapy and different spiritual disciplines because it's what I know from my background and in metaphysics and just my whole lifelong discovering Bibles and religions of all kinds. So, <clears throat> so that's what I did. It's basically, it's, it's really, if I, you know, explaining to you, it's really not that special in what I did, except what I'm doing with it. And it's the fact that I'm, I'm allowing a space where I can do therapy at from any distance using the same thing right now that you and I are doing, except it's in a private space that this other format allows for, um, and it allows for various other things too. Like when I when I first started as a clinical hypnotist, I would always record all of my sessions. Um, one because I could review it. Two, sometimes the clients wanted the session to hear the hypnosis in it, and also it helps me to re review things and to build off of previous sessions, and also for the protection of the two people, so that if anything is said um, out of um, that misconstrued is taken out of context or misconstrued yes mm -hmm. um, then but there's a recording of it and I don't publish the recordings of course because they're private I just download them and keep them for myself just in case I need it so that was like the little genius stroke of genius I had for a moment because it doesn't happen for me a lot but I had a little stroke of genius and it worked out I had my my first session in the private room and it was great and a lot of other things built off of that um, and synaptic syntax sequencing is simply, an, see, so what I do is I hijack a lot of stuff that already exists and just rename it because I don't, I want to take it away from what other people are doing. Because I, I really want to make it very difficult for people to understand what I'm doing. Why? I'm just joking. <laughs> no, it's, it's, um, no, it's, um, I have a habit of just renaming things, but also it's based off of neuro-linguistic programming which in my understanding and expert opinion is simply a subset of hypnosis. Um, and I call it syn synaptic syntax sequencing. So you have neuro, right, neurons, synaptic. So the synapses between the nerves. Um, linguistic, syntax, like the order of languages, uh, and programming, mm -hmm. sequencing. So it's pretty much the exact same thing. I just call it synaptic syntax sequencing because I'm a brand person. So I'm like, what did you do? NLP? No, synaptic syntax sequencing or S3, whatever, right? But that's just <laughs> what it is. And, and when you're looking at it, it looks fancy. You're like, what's synaptic? It sounds really sciencey. That sounds really highfalutin. So that's, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. You know, <laughs> it sounds so smart. Um, Yes, it'll make you smarter. Look, just look up those three words in the dictionary and you'll be a better person. Um, right. And yeah, that's it. And so the the other parts of that, World Reading Club is WRC, EAP is Ed Allan Poe, and LEC is Literary Expert Certificate. And um, the other thing you see, CMT is simply the Clinical Metaphysical Therapy I already just told you about. Um, and Unique Librium LLC is my company that I uh, established yes. with the State Corporation Commission of Virginia. Um, and so it's through that that I'm launching these different things, the certification and the open clinic. Um, and they're both done online. The certification you didn't hear about, but it's pretty easy. You've heard Sarah reading um, Edgar Allan Poe and different poetry Yeah, works you're here. a big fan. So I didn't realize you were such a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe's. 
I have been Edgar Allan Poe fan for a long time. If you look at any of my music or my my poems, and I'll send you a copy of my haiku, my second haiku book that I self published. It is super dark and out of control. It's a ro- emotional roller coaster. So, uh, oh my readers, gosh, let's feature you in my newsletter, dis- Hakeem. Why haven't you sent me anything? Reader, just dis- reader discretion is advised because you have because you, I'm, I'm scared of you. You're so on top of your shit. <laughs> exactly. So I have no problem following up until you send me something. All right. So I'm going to. That's what I told um, someone on Fireside today. They were like, oh, Graciela, I haven't forgotten about your poetry feature. Thanks for inviting me. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. You can take your time. I'll follow up. I'm not going to forget that I invited you to be featured. Like you would think people would be jumping at the chance of a feature, but I guess not. So funny. I guess. I guess not, Graciela. What the heck is. Is there a problem? What is, what's going on here? Grass, you know? But yeah, um, so oh anyway. my gosh, Edgar Allan Poe, I love him to death. <laughs> Literally. Um, ah, the, oval, death. the oval portrait is my favorite. And um, I'm a literature major, yes. so we can talk about him all day. Oh, we, um, we read that on your suggestion. Yes. Uh, yeah. Was your major one of your majors? I majored in English literature and film. So those, oh, I have those a, my a bachelor's in. I have a bachelor's in Eng, English language and linguistics, as well. Right. So you took you took the but other I, the other option available, and I did not want to take that option. I was yeah. like, uh, I don't care that what, much the, about the science the linguistics of the option? language. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. I just cared about the books yeah. and the creative aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I still know nothing. I just. I mean, the way that I write and everything that I do is like so out of everything that I learn. I'm like, oh yeah, thanks for the degree. I'm gonna do whatever I want, though. <laughs> so, yes. Um, right. um, but yeah, and that's that's really it. Like, I just am, you know, hacking the technology for these purposes. Like, there's these spaces, and there's so many things you can do. I mean, like, it was so natural for me to just open up that space and then just sit and listen. And then offer advice and then do a little clinical hypnosis session and then say, here, take this uh, binaural beat and to listen to these two binaural beats and call me in the morning, you know. And so it's really fun. <laughs> call me in the morning. Uh, <laughs> That's a song yeah, by and, Corinne uh, Bailey Ray. <laughs> call me so what's your take on this? Days. I'd like to know, does any of this even make any sense to you, Graciela, or are you just looking at a crazy person? <laughs> well, those are two very different questions with and they can have two different answers no so yeah, well, they, thank they, you first of all for true. explaining yeah. and and i do think you're a genius so you're just so humble and sweet you should stop it but it's um so okay, i still don't understand it right because i would probably understand it better if i saw it happening not just to me but to someone else um because because it's all it's all new like clinical hypnosis i didn't even know that people got degrees in clinical hypnosis you know what i mean like i know there's hypno coaches and hypnotherapists but i didn't realize that it was like i don't know clinical you know you add that word to it and it just changes the context well, of it a bit the yeah so the first i think i said this before but the first nationally accredited college of hypnosis is the Hypnosis Motivation Institute in Tarzana, California. And I lucked out when I was attempting to go to school to be a psychiatrist to live a seven-minute walk from the school, which is located on Ventura and Reseda Boulevard, or the, mm. I should say the corner of Reseda and Ventura Boulevard in California. Um, and they've been there since 1967. Um, like I said, if you're a doctor or a nurse or any other practitioner, you can – go there and get continuing education credits because they're backed by the Department of Education. Um, they're backed by the uh, cool. accrediting council for continuing education and training so people can get their CEUs and stuff there. So yeah, it's actually a very unique and original thing because no other institution um, that teaches hypnosis has been able to teach exclusively hypnosis and get such um, such established uh, credentials like you know being able to give CEUs right. and they just started uh, an associate a, a mind body associates degree in psychology um, so they're really mm. making moves and this is after you know that now they're like 50 years it's 2017 I think was their 50th year anniversary um, 
So yeah, they they uh, have been making waves. They have a union, a hypnotist union, the American Hypnosis Association, which certifies is one of the certifying bodies. Um, but you know, after doing a lot of research and finding out a lot of things. I realized that all of the teachers and all the people and all the whoever does the certification, they went through the exact same schooling that I did. And I realized a long time ago that I could certify people in clinical hypnosis as long as I based it off of a logical system that the progression and the requirements are very clear and established. And so I've just been doing that. Um, but now I'm extending it to basic literacy. And you know how certifications work. I mean, you can, you can uh, have a, a talent show at a high school and you can give certificates out for pretty much anything. Um, Ooh, as as yeah. Know, the, don't get me started with but that. Long, I mean, go right. ahead. But as long as people have a, a system and you can see what the requirements are and the requirements are published and clear, like I just said, my requirement for this literacy certificate is you have to read and present certain things in public and make a recording and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes behind it. So, but yes, sorry about that. You were saying about, yeah, don't get you started about, well, get started though. I want to hear. No, it's <laughs> just, you know, like certifications are, are such a buzzword right now that I, um, yeah. I, I get, I cringe a little bit about, life coach certifications and whatnot um especially after i spent so much time and money on mine and other people can become certified so quickly right. and so easily so um that's crazy right, exactly i know it's like the school i went to we had to go for an entire year and a minimum of 720 hours over that year we were in classes live every day doing practicums which meant that we were simulating and or really being hypnotized and simulating and or really hypnotizing our fellow students and teachers every single day practicing the techniques. And then we had a clinical residency where we had to see clients for, I think it was like 100 hours or something like that. So just like if you were you know, a psychologist or a physician, we had to do a residency. They had an on-campus clinic, which is a professional clinic that was a, a, a whole separate thing, but, but attached to the school. Um, and so, I got to see how something that a lot of people don't even think should exist as a discipline, hypnosis, so they think it's like some kind of magic or devil worshiping. Um, that, you know, like to have it be presented in such a professional way. I mean, people should really look at it, by the way. If anybody wants to look at the school, um, their, their website is hypnosis.edu. Um, um, and so, I mean, you can't get an EDU designation unless you are an established school that's uh, – recognized by the United States Department of Education. So, and it makes it easy, right? Hypnosis.edu. So if anybody wants to look at that, they also have a distance learning course. They have a campus in Georgia. Oh shit, Sarah, they have a campus in Georgia. Um, and uh, it's a remarkable program. I mean, I don't agree with everything <laughs> that they, they teach or even stuff, the philosophies of the teacher who founded it himself, but I think he's a great man. I think he did a great service to the world and he was married to uh Carol Brady from the Brady Bunch in real life. Um, <laughs> um, okay. And she actually became. So I have a question. And she, and she actually became a hypnotist, a certified hypnotist um, after he died. And she, mm. she's practicing. I saw her actually giving a class one day when I went by there after I graduated. Yes. What's your question? <clears throat> so my question is, how does your open clinic intention translate to wisdom? Are you intending to, you know, like you're in session, come up and experience what it's like, have a little taste. And, you know, if that, you want a full also, session, then book me. Like what, what are you, how are you yes, translating it to here? It's, I'm make I'm bringing awareness to it and just saying, this is what I'm doing. There's a, there's a reason also why when I do talks, I put these, th I'm also making notes so that I have ways to reference things and show that when I really uh, fully started engaging with an idea and also to help educate people. Again, it's mostly about awareness because sometimes, you know, people will never listen to these entire things, but the way that I look at my, and how I've looked at my content for a long time is that everything that I create will eventually be useful to somebody at some time. And so I create titles and I log them and I speak about certain things because it has happened so much in my life that somebody asked me a question about something I was like, and I, someone asks me a question about something and I say, you know what? 
I just talked about that. Here's an in-depth thing. Here's the link. Check it out. And every <laughs> single time, they're just like, wow, that's exactly what I was looking for, what I needed to know. And also, it's one of the reasons why I run blog websites, because as opposed to most traditional websites where you get five to ten static pages, um, a little secret out there is people you should change the blog pages because you can publish an unlimited amount of blogs as you want for eternity, as long as websites are on the earth, as far as, far as the way they work now, because I have tens of thousands of pages of stuff that I published. And, um, and the thing is about that is you can, you can make a blog page look like a static web page. And so it could be a, turned into a landing page. It could be an information page for a specific product. It could be an article about something, but everything is standalone and you never have to have a static thing. And then the fact that I have so much content that gets produced every day and published on my website, they continue to remain what is known as authority sites that whatever information I put on there that gets linked from. Anyway, it's a really cool uh, thing, but Yes, um, part of it is awareness, but part of it is just, yeah, if you want to experience it, you can, and then we can do um, a private session. You can book a private session. But I put other things in here that are not the same, like the World Reading Club and that certification. Um, and, the, again, the wording of it and putting all these things here is saying, look, I own this. This is me. Um, you need to uh, respect my authority. I came up with this first, no, <laughs> no, but it's just, it's really just to, um, to, to make awareness for the most part. Mm. Well, you want to laugh about something really funny that just happened to me? I do. And I want to acknowledge Mary Cara. I see that you're in the queue. So um, please be patient. Oh, hi, and Mary. I'll get, get to you uh, eventually, maybe sooner than later. We'll, we shall see how this flows with Miss, Mrs. Graciela Moore. Yes, I'm not going to take the full half hour. I don't know what you were thinking with your timer, but okay. So, um, <laughs> I spent all afternoon, literally, absolutely all afternoon, cleaning, which is good, right? I cleaned and I organized and I picked up all the clutter looking for the Fire Stick remote, you know, for the TV. And yeah, guess I where I just that. found it? After, Please do Right, tell. so guess where I found it? Under the covers. <laughs> wow so so I mean, all day you were long talk all day long it was yeah. just on the bed literally just under the covers that's, that's so hilarious hilarity. yes hilarity hilarity so yeah because i just heard you talking earlier about it and you were thinking about getting that tv what what did he say that he got a tv that was it's a um, fire it built it's a fire tv oh so it has a built-in and that's not bad he said it was 300 bucks for yeah that's no not, that's I mean, that's not bad, but if it if he also has a remote, then it doesn't solve my problem, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like so, I thought, I thought he was gonna say like you speak to the TV the way I speak to Alexa, and the TV does all of it, right? Like you don't need the remote, but if you need the remote, then my TV is already a Fire TV. It has a Fire Stick behind it, so there you go, right? But um, yeah, isn't it hilarious? Like, I feel like Spirit played a joke on me to get me to organize my studio in my room. Be like, I'm just going to put the fire stick tricks. under the covers and it'll be safe yep. and sound all day long. <laughs> and you're going to organize and clean everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I'm like getting ready for bed and I open the covers and it's like, Sight! it's right here. <laughs> yeah, I felt ridiculous. But anyway. Uh, well, thank you for all of the information. I am definitely interested in your hypnosis certification, so you should hit me up about that. And yeah, also, um, Graciela, have you yes. have you done hypnosis before? Like in your training, do they have that at? Uh, is it Lumia, right? No, Lumia coaching is all about positive psychology, implicit okay. bias, um, you know, holding space, uh, different techniques from positive psychology so nothing like that no so the um the difference between my certification program and the school that i went to is that theirs is um 720 hours which is really which is cute um but uh, mine is uh 999 hours 
Oh my gosh. I thought you, I was hoping you were going to say a lot less than that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do that. 999 um, can, hours? Yes, and you can accumulate that in various ways, which shall be explained. Um, I'll send you a, a document on it. Um, I have to update it, but it's complete. I think I'm pretty sure I have it on one of my websites. Um, but it's actually pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, so in the same way that, uh, so something I just read to someone, and this would be, this should be um, interesting to you because you know how people have all of those like certification mills and all that stuff like that and how you're talking about how life coaches can just do it overnight, right? Well, I came up with a solution to that problem with modern technology. So as long as the technology is here, we'll have the solution. And on one of my, so my company in, in Hong Kong was called uh, Haiku Science Academy. And uh, one of the things that I had written in the certification programs that I was doing is I wrote, someone cannot reasonably doubt that you are a great teacher of something when you can provide them with evidence that shows you in action, successfully doing the thing that they're considering to hire you to do. Because at the time, I was training English teachers, and I was a manager of English teachers, and I was recruiting, I was doing demonstrations and showing how to do demonstrations to parents so that their kids could sign up at these very expensive private schools that taught English. <clears throat> And people were like, oh, I got to get to Cambridge this, and I have to have this to be certified in order to get my work visa and all that. And I said, let me tell you something. Here's the difference. You can get certificates all you want, and a bunch of them are shady. Because I know it because I got one. And the, the thing is, is that there's no escaping my certification. You have to demonstrate on video you teaching English. You have to demonstrate you showing that you can do what you supposedly say that you can do. You cannot escape this. So, and it has to be put up in a public space like uh, YouTube. Like not everybody has to see it, but I have to have access to it to prove that you are able to do the thing you say that you're doing, which is teaching in front of a class confidently and that you know the subject that you're teaching. And, you know, YouTube has this, this feature where you can make videos unlisted. So uh, anybody you can send that, the link to, they can look at it, but if they don't have the link, link People don't see it normally, and it's unlisted, so it's not searchable either. Um, and but now with the with a lot of the spaces, so so people can do that. But since I work mostly in the audio space, um, this is perfect for that as well. If you can if you can clearly uh, and and succinctly or in any way, you could just be a crazy jabbermouth like me. But if you can express the fact that you have knowledge of your subject and it's recorded and you can go back and reference it and I can, and you can say, yeah, this is what was the requirement. This is what I said and what I did. Here's the recording of it. And this is why I got the certificate. So here are the requirements. Boom, it's recorded. This is what it said that I need to do. And here's my certificate. And of course, it's not just all about recording um, the voice and, th and teaching and saying you can do these things in hypnosis. It's also about writing because that's the other medium that lends itself very well to the technology. And I'm keeping it as simple as possible because I did a lot of video stuff and that's fine. If people want to do video talks and all that, that's great. That's, that's cool. But for me, it's just text and audio video and images are all pluses. Um, so anyway, mm. so yeah, 999 hours lady, but there are ways you can do it because you can be doing a video and you know, if you're talking on a video and you're recording certain things, it's cumulative. It's not, it's not restricted and it's cumulative. So you're going, working at your own pace and you'd be surprised how quickly you can actually accumulate 999 real authentic ethical hours of actual learning a subject if you just record it and manage your time and your schedule properly. Mic drop. But also nine, just, you know, as a consumer's perspective, 999 hours sounds very expensive but you don't need to talk about price. Like you just send me the document, yeah. Hakeem, just send me the paperwork. I want to see it. <laughs> and... hey, speaking of paperwork, did you finish reading the, that homework I gave you last night? No, I haven't. Okay. I have not. I have no problem admitting that I do not do any work <laughs> during the weekend. Hey, you, got, um, no, I, you, you did say that before. So that's right. I probably will not touch it until Monday. Um, okay. No, but today, Today we went to SeaWorld on a holiday, which was a ridiculous yeah, yeah, idea. I don't know what That's we were awesome thinking. 
Um, yes, he was very happy and very pleased. And then he napped for five hours. Yes, that's right. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun was And had. then the rest of the afternoon, I'm not lying. Right, I'm not lying. I spent the rest of the afternoon picking up and decluttering and organizing the toys, looking for the remote, and I just finished. So, like, I didn't even sit down on my desk. And that's usually how weekends go, actually. This is why I don't work during the weekend, because I just, I, there's other things that need to get done, right? Like in the house. And so I just don't sit down on my computer at all. Um, so, yeah, but don't worry. I haven't forgotten that you sent it. And it will get figured out. Everything is figure outable. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I'm not uh, tripping. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. So go ahead and bring Mary Kay up. I'm going to get ready for bed, but I'll be listening. Right. And uh, if I have a question, I'll either text you or come back up. That's right. All right. Okay, Always great bye. hearing from you, Graciela. I love it. Bye. You yes, you too, Hakeem. Bye, Mary Kira. That was Graciela Moore, the wonderful, the great. Graciela was um, uh, one of the main influences on this platform for me to start steamrolling ahead. Hey, Mary Kara. Graciela, uh, thank God you found your father's <laughs> Because <coughs> I right. can't find my. Are you all right? Drink some water. What's um, no, happening no, over no. There? It's a, I'm at my uncle's house, and I have major allergies, and there's a cat. And oh. It makes it even worse. Well, you know what you were getting into. Well, I knew. I she's adorable, but uh, I brought me medicines. I went home today, and I also went to the doctor. All is good. It's just allergies. And, yeah. uh, I saw, I saw your um, I, I like your new photo, your new profile photo here. Oh, thank like you're you. You're having fun. I yeah, I do darts and other things at my age. But I had you, I had my uncle listening to you earlier th to this afternoon, as you were speaking to another lady. Um, was it Sarah or was it? Uh, uh, I I don't know something with storm storm. Oh, storm. Strem, yes, uh, yes, uh, Sandra Strem, yes. Yes, and it's so funny because he served in Germany and he spoke German and I used to kind of, and we're like, I think she's off with the word, the definition. Well, but, she's, um, she's Swedish, so. So it's close slightly then, different. okay, maybe it's close. Yeah. It's close. Uh, but because, he um. Yeah, because my, my great great grandmother's Dutch, uh, and and they're always fighting the Germans, Dutch, and the Swedes about. Oh, no, this no, is we're we're all not influenced. Yeah, uh, we're all killing each other. Yeah, for nonsense. I also have a Dutch of a family. Yeah. Uh, so, hmm. but I did want to get my uncle involved. Of course, he's old and he was very sick and. He was really bad the past few days, so I've been staying here with him. But he's doing much, much better, thank God. And so I'm trying to get him out of his mindset. And um, and I'm well, just, good. just listen to him. Just And he wanted to talk, and I'm like, you can't talk because he's talking to someone else. Uh, just listen. And he did listen. He did well, listen. That's good. I'm, I was helpful in some way. Yes, he did listen. And what we admired about you is that you never uh, changed your tone of voice. Hmm, that's interesting. Sometimes I do, though. I Sometimes I get really excited. But, oh, me too. Um, but it depends on who I'm talking to. Uh, um, by the way, uh, Nancy, energy lady, I think the police are after us. There's helicopters flying over the house. That is hilarious. It's Daryl, we were talking about. Daryl, good sir, I see that you are in the queue, and I do want to talk to you. So please be patient. I'm gonna for let just... Daryl wait for one hour. <laughs> no, Go no. order and punish. No, you are not. <laughs> um, I, I have a digital back. I mean, what's going on? Someone I have a digital. 
Someone... I have a digital boot here. <laughs> oh, you could boot Sorry, me. go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Mary. Well, go, go to the saying. prosecutor. <laughs> no, I don't want to be on for one hour because I have it's to. It's 11-11. Oh, wow. In, in, my, in my part of town. Yeah. Well, it's 11, 11 my part of town, too. Angel numbers. So. Well, I just paid attention. I just looked at the clock. You know how old this clock is? Tell That's me. My room? Tell me. Hold on. I think it must be about... 45 years old. No. Older. Hold on. I could determine the approximate. So it's Sterling and Noble Clock Company. Registered. Wow. That, uh, registered the, the serial number, manufactured number nine. Daryl, is that coming on? It's you and I, bro. <laughs> Number nine. You crazy. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, so Sterling and Noble is, um, uh, has been around for quite a long time, I believe. You know, oh, yeah, I remember now why I know their name. Because I was, uh, when I was teaching an English class, um, I, uh, uh, there was a whole section about different clocks and there was a, there was a sundial. There was a, yes. And there was a, a an hourglass and there was a, a water dial, a water clock, which yes. works like an hourglass, but with water. Yes. And then the other one was a, a clock and it was from Sterling. So it was, it was from Sterling and Noble. And then, and then there was another company they showed that also made like really old clocks, but that's an Eng a British company. Um, well, let me advertise, because uh, you know me. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I was in the gold business. Okay, gold. Uh, gold, yeah. Gold, diamonds. So you got you got any left over? I, I don't know. I can't find. I think my mother stole most of it. <laughs> Okay. No, I, I gave some to my nieces. I gave some as gifts. Uh, I'm getting too old and it's too heavy for me. So I was thinking we might have uh, to do some yes, Indiana Jones mission to get to go find some more gold. Oh, I know how to dig. Okay. I know how to blast. I learned at a very young age. Uh, so that was just, it, it, I'm like 11th generation. And my cousin's uh, son, Claudio, uh, started with, uh, what's that, uh, the, the one, those watches that's like $200,000, Rolex, Geneva. Yeah. And now what they, what they, he does is it's specially designed for each individual. Daryl. So yeah. And it's designed and it's patent and for one of a kind. These are, uh. I don't even, is it still Rolex that he works for? Or? Well, he's basically like a CEO of this huge, but it's all basically one umbrella if uh, anybody knows anything about watching. Yeah. So uh, uh, he travels the world. Travels the world, you say? Yes, he does. Well, yeah. that's a good he's thing because I am a big like, fan. I would, I would send you a link, but you know, someone in wisdom is after me. I'm convinced. All right. Uh, that's well, okay. It's just a joke. Uh, we'll I, see. I, I violated some code of conduct. You told me that before. Listen, you're going to be fine. I tried. I know I tried to send you messages. It does uh, Can I and, give my email? Yes, ask you can. me. Ask me. Can I do that on there? Yeah, you can give me your email. There. Okay, I'm doing it right now. Okay. And, uh, all right. So, but. so I, I, he, you know, he put it in my room, uh, that was given to him by his family. Yeah. And, um, it's beautiful. I never really paid attention cause I don't wear watches. Oh, listen. Uh, so if you, put your email on the ask me profile everybody will see it so, oh perfect beautiful but you want everybody you want everybody to see your email well i'm too late now i did it you can remove it i mean i was going to give you mine because my my email is I public give but... it to me 
Or maybe Instagram. Uh -huh. Let me remove it, please. I don't need the whole... Uh... Yeah. Let me see. I probably can not respond to it or something Ask. like that. Graciela's giving yeah, me some words of wisdom over here. Okay. So, anyway. So, are you on Instagram? Yeah, uh, I am. You can find the same name that I use here on uh, Wisdom, which is Unique Equilibrium. Um, you can find me on Instagram there. Uh, and Let's do that. that now. You see, you see the word that's in my my, uh, yeah, right. my my description here it says Unique Equilibrium LLC. Yeah. So that's the same one on on uh, Unique. Okay. So listen, mm. I'm going to go ahead. I'm listening. Um, I'm going to do, do another call in a minute here. Hold on for a second. Okay. Let me see what's going on here. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I'll find you. So 1111 yeah. is a, a angel number, which I didn't know. Yeah, uh, it's an angel number. So, <clears throat> all right, listen. So, uh, Mary Kara, thank you very much for speaking thank to me. You, you have my, you have my Instagram now. I'm going to, um, yeah. We're going I'm to, going to follow you in a few minutes. I'm getting off. And then I'm gonna, and I'm gonna Instagram DM you. So check the Instagram DMs, direct messages, okay. so that I can. But I will also, uh, um, make sure that I stay in touch with you later. Thank you so, so much. All right, my dear. Okay. Thank you. You're fine, thank Mary. You. Thank you. All right. Love you. I'll talk to you later. Love you too. Right. Thank you, Graciela. You're always so awesome. Um, and uh, she said, Graciela sent you, Mary Carey, awesome. my profile and a direct message. So she said for you to check that out. What's up, Sarah Del Valle? How you doing? Good morning. So, uh, how are you? Good morning, she says all the time. It's always a good time. For the morning time. Good. Morning. Good. You know, uh, um, I was just talking to Graciela, as you heard, and um, and I saw, yeah. Uh, Daryl called in a little bit earlier, but he said he'll call back if I have time. Um, if I'm around later, I wanted to talk to Daryl. Um, but I'm glad that I got to talk to Mary Cara. So I'm, it's always okay. a pleasure to talk to Mary Cara. So, um. Uh, oh yes. So what's uh, what's your next meeting? How you doing? How are you feeling? I'm good. good. I'm good. Hey, I'm really I'm so glad. I want to thank you, um, you and Chris, um, and Vlad for sticking around when that gentleman uh, who needed help earlier, uh, you guys stuck around and no and then Chris went and held a space for him in that other room so you know he could vent and get out whatever he needed to get out so. That was really great of you guys. I, I feel like I have the best team. You guys are awesome. So what um no problems. What uh what's the next project? Mm -hmm. What's happening? Um Ooh, let's see, let's see, give me a second. I almost had it, but I don't I don't remember now. And then, um I don't know. I think I want to do a poem tonight. Which one? Because that's a very broad thing there. Don't we have a lot of poems with Mr. Edgar Allan Poe? No, right? My bad. I mean, he has, uh, on that list, on poestories.com, everybody, poestories.com. So, everyone, this is uh, this is Sarah Del Valle, and she has gleefully joined up forces with me with World Reading Club. Um, she is Im improving and enjoying and loving her reading of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, oh, speaking of that, did I say, oh, yeah, I did send it to Graciela. I sent her my my dark haiku book. Um, and she was like, I didn't know you were so much into Edgar Allan Poe. But yeah, man, I've been uh, a Poe fan for so long. I even, uh, I think I, I even named one of my songs, which hasn't been released yet, but that was the room that we named it the other day. It was called The Absence of absence. And that was because of a rumor that I had heard about how Edgar Allan Poe possibly died because he was such a, a drunk. He was so awash in alcohol. Mainly he loved absinthe. And so 
And I also heard that Jack the Ripper dabbled in some acid, but who knows? He's, he's so fi uh, fictional in yep. so many ways. Nobody even knows who he is. I stick to one particular uh, interpretation of that whole thing, but I don't want to talk about that here because that's scary. Um, Jack the Ripper. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, I really appreciate you guys, you and Chris and Vlad was there. Oh, and, and, and Extra was there. So that was really cool. I mean, whenever we're ganged up like that, and like we're together and somebody comes in, I, I think it really feel, helps them to feel safe that people are just sitting there listening. You know, people just want to be listened to. I hope it helps for them, for him, for real. Well, what do you think? I mean, you were listening to him. Yeah, like, I, I, he, I, just, I think he needs to just, you know, let them do what they need to do. And then so he can get the, he can get gone out of there. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that's the best has, advice. He, he, yeah, and he sticks up. He but he's um he just sticks up for what he believes in, on that part. So it's the problem with too many people. I mean, we can only. That's the hmm? problem with too many people. They don't know how to give up their their position, in order to have long term. Yeah, freedom. they don't want to. They don't want to back down. Yeah, they they long term, they'll they'll hold a long term position, for with for no freedom, instead of giving up their position short term for long term freedom. It's just weird, but. Such is the uh, state of our minds, you know. Not everybody can be as stable as we would wish them to be. Yeah. Very true. Some of them just they um they tried though. He tried. He did try. He at least came on. He he at least came onto a call and then just you know was exp you know explained itself and everything like that. So that was a good thing. Yeah. He was open. He was being open, but he was. He just needs to you know. Calm down. <laughs> Chill the f out. And get... Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's kit. <laughs> easier said than easier said than done, though. But yeah, I totally get that. Um. Yeah. So, so you you left me a pretty. Where he's coming from, but I also understand where you come from. <laughs> yeah. On that part. So you left me a pretty vague. Um, option here. You said you want you think you want to do a poem. Yeah, I think I want to go to sleep. Oh, um. But, you know, that's not, you know, that's not me saying I'm definitely going to go to sleep. What poem are you going to read, woman? I was trying to look at it, but I'm going to do the Conqueror, Conqueror Worm. All right, let's see. I'm going to see if I can find that on uh, poststories.com. Post so, stories. Okay, so it's a poem. Like, we just established that. And and it's called, oh, Post. the Conqueror Worm. The poetry, yeah. Wow, that's a tongue twister. The Conqueror know, Worm. Right? <laughs> Con Conqueror Worm. Conqueror Worm. All right. So let's go ahead and, and we're going to go read that. And just because I want to, oh, look at all these wonderful Instagram messages. Um, and uh, just because, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little outro. So everyone, Sarah Del Valle. Uh -huh. We're going to step into her her universe for a moment, and she's going to be reading. Don't tell me, Sarah. Let me. She's going to be reading *The Conqueror Worm*, published in 1843 by Edgar Allan Poe. You're welcome to read along with us by going to PoeStories.com, clicking the little hamburger menu on the crow's tail, and there you will see a section labeled poetry. Click on that. And you'll come to a list of poems in the poetry section. And the fifth one from the top is called The Conqueror Worm. And you can click on that and read along with us. So are you going to join us in our World Reading Club adventure as we go over to Sarah Del Valle's room? Sarah, so you got it all set up. Are you ready to go? Do you got some cut and paste? Or how long is it going to take to get that started? Um, I just got to do um, the little, whole little sm the quick setup, and then it'll be just two minutes. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Two minutes. Are you ready? All right. So I'll be looking I out am. for that uh, alert, everybody. Uh, look out for the alert. Sarah Del Valle will be in a room, and I might be over there chirping my head. Oh, but I do have to because I'm her, her moderator. All right. So we are going to be over in Sarah's universe in just a moment. Thank you for listening to this edition of 
Thank open you. clinics. <laughs> I just, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> open clinic. Yeah, you get out of here. I'm going to read. I'll my, see you in uh, a moment. Thing. I'll see you in a minute. All right, here we go. I'm going to see if I can, if I can read my thing. All right. My outro. Bye. With a, uh, <clears throat> not laugh. All right, see you in a minute, Sarah. Yeah. I'll look, I'm going to jump into that room. Okay. Right, here we go. Open clinic. Okay. Synaptic syntax sequencing, WRC. <laughs> All right, um, I'm done. Open. Uh, that's it. You can read. I love you guys. Talk to you later.